Hello, you are watching Shalom World News. I'm Rudy McLennan, coming to you from Glasgow, Scotland. Here are the latest headlines from around the world. On Thursday, the last day of the Holy Father's apostolic visit to Kazakhstan, the pontiff gave his concluding remarks at the 7th Congress of Leaders of World and Traditional Religions in Nur Sultan. He said it is necessary to respond collectively to the incendiary atmosphere that terrorist violence sought to incite and which threatened to turn religion into a grounds for conflict. The Pope warned everyone to be wary of pseudo-religious terrorism, extremism, radicalism and nationalism which masquerade in religious garb. He added that it was providential that religious leaders could come together once again to reaffirm the authentic and inalienable essence of religion more than 100 delegates from 50 nations representing the major religions of the world assembled in the Kazakh capital for the Congress to seek ways to foster peace and mutual understanding. Pope Francis has asked the Nicaraguan regime to allow expelled nuns of the Missionaries of Charity Order founded by Mother Teresa to return to the country. He said this in response to a question on board his return flight to Rome from Nur Sultan after his three-day apostolic visit to Kazakhstan. It was in July that the 18 nuns were deported to Costa Rica on the orders of President Daniel Ortega. Their deportation came after the government ordered the closure of operations carried out by the missionaries of charity. After they crossed the border and entered Costa Rica, they were welcomed by the local bishop and given sanctuary. While answering another question, the Pope bemoaned the moral degradation of the West. He expressed concern over the advancement of legal euthanasia in countries such as France, Italy and Belgium. He said killing is not human and should be left to the animals. As the United States is going to witness mid-term elections in November, the Senate has put on hold a vote to legalise same-sex marriage. This was announced by members of the Senate on Thursday after days of discussions and debate. The Respect for Marriage Act, if passed, would repeal the Defence of Marriage Act of 1996, which says that marriage as per federal law is the union of a man and a woman. It also allowed states not to grant recognition to same-sex marriages contracted in other states. In July, the act was passed in the House with 47 Republicans supporting it, along with the Democrats. Democratic lawmakers went forward with the legislation after the Supreme Court repealed Roe v. Wade in June, that being the case that legalised abortion in the country. A court in the American state of Louisiana has blocked the transgender mandate of the Biden administration. The ruling of the New Orleans 5th US Circuit Court of Appeals allows doctors not to perform irreversible procedures that go against their conscience and medical expertise. It was on August the 4th that the court heard oral arguments in the Franciscan Alliance versus Betchera lawsuit. The Alliance of the Catholic Healthcare Network, with 19,000 medical professionals, was represented in court by Beckett, a Washington-based law firm. The Fifth Circuit Court ratified the lower court's ruling, which permanently enjoined HHS from mandating that Franciscan Alliance should perform gender reassignment surgeries or abortions. Joseph Davis, counsel at Beckett, said that doctors cannot do their jobs and comply with the Hippocratic Oath if the government requires them to perform such surgeries. In Brazil, a survey has found that a majority of citizens do not want abortion to be legalised. The survey, conducted by APEC, revealed that 70% of Brazilians are against legalising the termination of pregnancy. Only 20% of respondents said they favoured legalising the procedure. Abortion is a crime in the country under the penal code. However, there are exceptions for rape and when the health of the mother is in peril. In 2012, the Supreme Court ruled that abortion for babies with anencephaly could be allowed. The Socialism and Liberty Party wants the decriminalisation of abortion up to the 12th week of gestation. The survey was undertaken between September the 9th and the 11th in 158 municipalities across the country. On Thursday, the European Parliament condemned the illegal arrests of members of the Catholic Church in Nicaragua and sought the immediate release of Bishop Rolando Alvarez, who is under detention. In a resolution approved with a majority of 538 votes in favour, 16 against and 28 abstentions, the Parliament urged the Sandinista regime to restore human dignity and protect civil liberties. 
European lawmakers also said that the arbitrary detention of Bishop Alvarez of Matagalpa and other victims of religious persecution must be annulled. The Parliament also expressed regret over the worsening situation in the Central American nation and the repression of the Catholic Church. Lawmakers also justified the International Criminal Court probe into the Sandinista regime's crimes against humanity. In the Central African nation of Cameroon, the Catholic Archdiocese of Bamenda has called for peace for the sake of children. The Archdiocese is located in the English-speaking Ambazonia region, where separatists are fighting the Francophone Federal Army. The Commission for Justice and Peace of the Archdiocese said that peace is essential to allow students to resume the new academic year. It was on September the 5th that the new school year began. The Archdiocese says that for the past five years, children have not been able to attend school because of the raging conflict. An Archdiocesan Commission statement said that silencing the guns and giving our children the opportunity to pave their future through education will make the world a better place. American pro-life outfit Right to Life Indiana has welcomed the state of Indiana's new abortion ban, which came into effect on Thursday. Mike Fichter, who is the chief executive officer of the organisation, said that it is a new opportunity to show true love and compassion for pregnant mothers and their unborn babies. He said this historic moment is about a fresh new hope that a movement of the heart will unfold in Indiana that sets the pace for protecting life and providing the care and support pregnant mothers deserve. Indiana became the first state in the United States to pass such a ban since the Supreme Court overturned Roe v. Wade on June the 24th. Under the new law, abortion will be allowed only up to 20 weeks if there is a fetal anomaly and up to 10 weeks in cases of rape or incest. Abortion providers who violate the law face six years of imprisonment and a fine of $10,000. In a recent interview with the Archdiocese of New Orleans, an American nun who was released after almost five months in captivity in Burkina Faso recounted her ordeal. It was on the night of April the 4th that Marianite nun Sister Sue Ellen Tennyson was abducted by armed men from her mission residence in Yalgo. Forced to live in a tent-like structure with no books to read, Sister Sue Ellen resorted to mental prayer and the recitation of biblical verses to sustain herself spiritually. The 83-year-old missionary also undertook spiritual communion daily. Finally, it was late in August that she was freed in neighbouring Niger and handed over to the FBI and the US Embassy officials. The nun is now recuperating in New Orleans as she had contracted malaria and lost 20 pounds while in captivity. The European Union rights outfits and Christian activists have urged the Sri Lankan government to suspend a law that is allegedly being used to target citizens. EU representatives in the United Nations Human Rights Council have denounced the Prevention of Terrorism Act as it is used in an inhumane manner to target voices of dissent. EU delegates reaffirmed their commitment to protecting human rights and accountability for those responsible for the violence being witnessed in the island nation. The Christian Solidarity Movement has also slammed the law, urging the government to withdraw it as it is being used as a tool for repression. Catholic priest and activist Father Sarat Ida Malgoda said that about 3,000 activists have been arrested so far and 1,200 are in jail for demanding basic necessities such as food. The nation is witnessing protests against rampant poverty, the economic meltdown and an acute scarcity of essential items. The superior of the Jesuit fathers in Cuba was forced to leave the country as the government did not allow his residency permit to be renewed. Father David Pantaleon, hailing from the Dominican Republic, was told to leave the country. A statement from the Society of Jesus said that on September the 13th, Father Pantaleon had to leave the island as his permit was not renewed. In the communique, the congregation said the priest was also the president of the Cuban Conference of Religious Men and Women. The association has been outspoken in defending human rights on the island. Spanish news agency EFE said the Cuban dictatorship decided not to renew the priest's residence permit after demanding that he control the political and critical comments of the Jesuits, something that Father Pantaleon would not agree to do. In Ethiopia's Tigray region, 10 people were killed in airstrikes on September the 14th. The incident took place in the capital of the province, Makali. This comes after Tigrayan fighters agreed to hold discussions with the federal authorities. 
The Tigray separatists have accused Addis Ababa of perpetrating the attacks. News agency AFP quoted two doctors as saying that two drones rained bombs over a residential area in the capital. One of the doctors, Kibron Gabrisilasi, told AFP that 14 people were wounded in the strikes. However, the exact number of casualties cannot be verified, as the area is almost cut off from the rest of the country and almost all means of communication have been severed. According to Tigrayan separatists, this is the second round of attacks in two days after an earlier attack on Makala University injured people and damaged buildings. And those are your latest headlines. Do join us again tomorrow for more. And remember, you can also visit swnews.org for more updates. Shalom.